So here comes my favorite topic when it comes time to solve a system of equations. It, elimination is usually the one that will work for just about any type of situation. You can always make something eliminate. Uh, graphing sometimes isn't always easy and some of them are really just a bear for a substitution. Uh, I want you to just pay real close attention to this particular situation because take a look. We have a minus y and we have a plus y. And one of the things we can do is we can simply add these two equations up. And if I add everything on the left and everything on the right, it should still be in balance. So on the right side, I have six plus zero. And over here on the left, I have x and I have x and x, which makes two x. But the minus y and the plus y turn into zeros. And that's where the word elimination comes from is we just eliminated the y values. And so I just have this equation which says 2x equals 6. And if I divide by 2, I get x is 3. And that's the first part of our answer in our ordered pair. And I see that x plus y equals 0. I'm just going to substitute it into that second equation. Uh, instead of x, I'll have 3. 3 plus y equals 0. And I'm going to take away a 3 on both sides and I get y equals negative three, and there's your solution. When x is three and y is negative three, I actually solve both of these. Um, three minus a negative, if I plug it into the top one, three minus a negative three, two negatives, turn into pluses, and that's three plus three, which is six, and it's true. So there's our first problem, and it took just a minute. Here's another situation where I have, if you take a look, uh, the y's, uh, there's a minus 2y and a plus 3y. Those are not going to eliminate right now. But the x's sure will because that's an x and a minus x. And if I add that up, that's no x's. So I have 0x, that's a 0. And then if I add negative 2y plus 3y is just plus 1y. Uh, I'm not going to write a 1. Equals, and then 2 take away 6 is just negative 4. And so if I get rid of the 0, all I end up with is this. y equals negative 4, and you're already done with half your solution. So elimination tends to work a little bit quicker on some of these easy problems. I'm probably just going to put it into the top equation. Uh, I see x minus 2y. Let's try x minus 2y equals 2. But in place of y, I'm going to put that negative 4. And a negative 2 times a negative 4 is plus 8. X plus 8 equals 2. And if I take away 8, I get my solution for X. X is negative 6. So you can see that if, if we have the right situation for elimination, it really is pretty quick. Uh, quicker than most other methods. Let's go try number 9. <clears throat> the question is asking to solve the system and determine how many solutions it has. Remember from... Uh, from solving by substitution or graphing, we either have a situation where we could have one solution, which means we're going to get an ordered pair, or we could have none, which means we end up with no variables at all and we get a false statement of some kind, or we have infinite solutions, which means I have no variables, but I end up with a true statement. So those are our three possibilities when it comes time to determine how many solutions we have. And let's take a look. I notice that the x's are the same, but they both have a negative 4. So those aren't going to eliminate because they've got to be equal but opposite. But take a look at what we have with the y. We have a negative 3 and a plus 3y. So the y's are going to go away because they're both equal and opposite. And if I add the x's, I end up with negative 8x equals, and 10 take away 2 is just 8. And I just added them up, and I get negative... Uh, if I divide by a negative 8, I actually get an answer for x. So without deciding, without having to determine how many solutions there are, I know I'm going to have one answer because I actually got the answer. I have a variable and I got the answer. The only way you could get none or infinite is if you got rid of all the x's altogether. So we're going to go ahead and plug it back in and find the other half of the solution just so we can feel good about ourselves. Negative 4 times x is negative 4 times negative 1. That's negative 4x plus 3y equals 10. And negative 4 times negative 1 is 4 plus 3y equals 10. If I take away a 4 on both sides, I get 3y is equal to 6. And divide by 3, y is 2. So I actually have an answer. 
I have an answer of negative 1, comma 2, and that means that there's only one solution because I actually found it. One last question that we are going to try and determine how many solutions we have, and that means that we have a choice between either one, none, or infinitely many solutions. And we're going to solve this one by elimination. And I'm looking at this, and I see the 3x and the 6x, those aren't the same. And then I have a negative 2y and a negative 4y, those aren't the same. And we need to find a way to make one of these equal but opposite. And for me, the best way to go, I'm going to just get rid of the x's. But in order for us to do that, this is already a 6. And so I'm going to change a 3 into a minus 6x. And the way we do that is we're going to multiply by a negative 2. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to put parentheses around the whole equation and I'm gonna multiply it all by a negative two. So I've got negative two times three x, that's negative six x. And I have a negative two times a negative two y, that is plus four y equals, and I have a negative two times a five, which is negative 10. So I've taken this first equation and just multiplied the whole thing by a negative two. And what that did for me is it made the x coefficient opposite. So let's go ahead and take a look at, I'm just gonna copy the second equation down. 6x minus 4y equals two. I didn't have to multiply anything in the bottom equation. And when I combine these and add them up, take a look, the x's are gonna go away. 6x and a minus 6x makes zero x. But look what happens to the y. There's also no, no more y's. Plus 4y and a minus 4y is plus 0y. And over here, negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. And what I have left is I don't have any x's. I don't have any y's. All my variables are gone. But I end up with something that isn't true. So this is false. And remember that if we end up with a false statement, we're looking at no solutions. There are no solutions to this system of equations.